probably completely confused because you thought some stranger had taken over our drama class because I was in disguise. But it was just me, Miss Maggart. Okay, all kidding aside, welcome back to drama class for a new month. And this month we're calling it Mystery March. Mystery March. <laughs> okay, so we have some fun in store with Mystery March. This month, we're gonna be really diving into what it is like to create a character as an actor. So creating a character is kind of like solving a mystery. You have to take it one piece at a time as you're thinking through and analyzing all of the different things you want for your character to become. So the first thing we have today is I have a children's story. It's one of my favorites. It's super silly and it kind of goes through a lot of different characters. So I think you'll have a lot of fun just listening. Here it is. All right, you guys. So this story is called Horace and Morris join the chorus. But what about Dolores? All right. Horace and Morris, but mostly Dolores, loved to sing. Horace uh, sang the high notes. And Morris uh, sang the low notes. And Dolores sang the notes that no one had ever heard before. <laughs> one day, <gasps> a chorus, Dolores cried. I've always wanted to sing in a chorus, and now we can sing in one together. Welcome. Maestro Provolone boomed. Please come right in and let me hear you sing. Horace sang, Squeak to me softly enough. He poured his heart and soul into the high notes. What clarity! What Vibrato, Maestro Provolone exclaimed, clasping his paws to his heart. Morris sang, Somewhere over the rain spout. His voice caressed the low notes. What pitch, what pathos. Maestro Provolone cried, wiping a tear from his eye. Finally, it was Dolores's turn. Dolores sang, <coughs> The wheels in the mouse and the wheels that go round and round. She bellowed out notes that no one had ever heard before. <sighs> what? What? Enthusiasm! Maestro Provolone uttered, lowering his paws from his ears. <laughs> he loved us! Dolores assured her friends, we're in! But later that day, 
when they went to see who had been accepted into the chorus. There were the names of Horace and Morris, but not Dolores. <sighs> there must be a mistake. I'll go talk to Master of Provolone. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Dolores, Maestro Provolone said. He had a sad look on his face as if he had just eaten blue cheese. You're very enthusiastic, but I'm afraid your singing is just a little too loud. I can sing softly, Dolores said. Maestro Provolone began to squirm as if he had just eaten bad blue cheese. It isn't only that, Dolores. I'm afraid you just don't have an ear for music. <gasps> of course I do. I have two of them. Dolores stomped off in a huff. Every day, Horace and Morris passed Dolores on their way to rehearsals for the big concert. Hi, Dolores. Hi, Horace. Hi, Morris. Uh, bye, Dolores. Bye, Horace. Bye, Morris. Dolores tried to not feel hurt. She tried to not feel angry, but in the end, she felt both of those things and something more. She felt sorry for herself. This is not like me at all, she declared. I've got to find something else to do. She knew her friend Chloris was in the chorus, but what about Boris? Oh, I'm on my way to band rehearsal, Boris told her. It's too bad you don't play an instrument. Dolores, uh, then you could be in the band. But at least you'll be in the audience. The audience is an important part, too. I don't want to be in the audience. I want to be in the chorus. Determined to not feel sorry for herself any longer, Dolores went exploring. But when she called out, Hey, you guys, look what I found. There was no one there to come running and calling back. What is it, Dolores? So she tried climbing a tree, but when she got to the top, she felt lonelier and sorrier for herself than ever. I've had it, Dolores said. I'm going to write Maestro Provolone a letter. <coughs> Dear Maestro Provolone, I love to sing more than anything. It makes me feel good inside. When I'm told I can't sing, the words really sting. And my heart hurts as much as my pride. Who tells a bird she shouldn't be heard? Singing is just what birds do. So please take my word. I'm a lot like a bird. I have to sing out and be true. Please, Maestro Provolone, doesn't your chorus have a place for Dolores? Sincerely, Dolores, the bird. <laughs> Dolores felt much better. She slipped the letter under Maestro Provolone's door and skipped away. The next day. <gasps> what rhyme? What rhythm? Maestro Provolone declared, waving Dolores's letter over his head. Dolores beamed. You're a real poet, 
Maestro Provolone went on, and this would make a great song. May I put it to music for the chorus to sing? <gasps> yes, Dolores exclaimed, but, but, what about me? You? Well, of course you must be in the chorus to sing it. It's your song. You're right, Dolores. Everyone has a place in the chorus. Some singers just need a little more help. Will you let me work with you? You bet I will, Dolores cried. And so... The night of the big concert, everyone was there. Chloris and Boris and Horace and Morris, but mostly Dolores. Horace sang the high notes. And Morris sang the low notes. And most of the time, Dolores sang notes everyone had heard before. The end. I love this story because there are so many different characters and this month as we're diving into character development, this is a fun way to listen to different emotions, different voices, and different personalities in each little character of the story. All right, I hope you had fun listening to our story for this week and now I'm going to walk you through the two big activities you're going to get to work on today after this lesson is complete. So the first one is all about one of our actor tools, our body. Now I'm going to explain the game to you and then after the lesson, this is going to be the time where you could maybe try this game out with a couple of friends. The more people you have, the more fun the game is kind of, but it's really just up to you if you just want to do it with a couple of people or if you want to involve maybe five or six people in your class. This game is called Night at the Museum. You may have heard of it before. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to explain the positions to you and why this is a great warm up to get your body moving and practicing different kinds of characters that you could become. So position number one is the night guard. This person is kind of in charge of seeing how the statues are doing in the museum, right? All the other people in the game are going to be statues in a museum. That means that they have to be completely frozen, completely silent, and becoming a different character that might be in an exhibit. So the night guard turns their back to the group that they're playing with, the rest of the people silently, no making any noise, create statues from an exhibit that the night guard calls out. So if the night guard says, I'm gonna go to the ocean exhibit, they turn their back, the rest of the statues silently turn into frozen positions that you might find in the ocean, okay? So then the night guard's gonna turn around and you have to be still. If they catch you moving, you are out of the game. But every time the night guard turns their back, the statue turns into a new position, okay? So every time the night guard turns their back, you, if you are a statue, are gonna turn into a new position. The night guard is in charge of calling out what exhibit they're going to be walking to. So I would, if I were the night guard, I would allow the statues to chew, to do maybe two or three times of getting to do a statue in that theme and then call something different out. Like, I'm gonna go to the outer space exhibit. You turn your back, you allow the people to change into a new position, and then you turn around and the game begins again, okay? Couple of rules. Number one, silent game. 
If the night guard hears you making any noise, including laughter, even though sometimes it is a funny game, any noise, you get out. If the night guard sees you moving, you get out. And there is no touching the night guard. Of course, there's no really touching anyway because we're socially distanced. So this is Night at the Museum. Your challenge when you play this a little bit later is to make bold choices. Make bold choices. If the night guard calls out mm, the jungle exhibit, don't just stand still with your body just boring. Make something bold, big, give 110%. Okay, so that's what makes the game more fun if you choose bold statues, okay? So make bold choices and this is an awesome way to use one of our actor tools, your body. So have fun, we'll do that a little bit later after the lesson is complete. Here's what's coming up next. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna work on after our lesson is you are gonna create your very own character today. Just like you heard in our story earlier, I use a lot of different types of voices and emotions to portray the characters in the story. You are gonna create your own character using our attention please format. Remember, it's a greeting, your name. Today we're gonna to do three things about you, thank you and take a bow. But here is how it's the character challenge. Today, you are gonna create a completely different character from yourself. Think back to us doing Chocolate Bunny when you used all different types of voices. Think about my example today from my different characters in the story. You have a million creative ideas and you're gonna to get to show some of those today. So for attention please today with the character challenge, you are gonna come up with a name that is completely different from yours, three things about that character, thank you and take about all as that character. So this is no longer you, this is a completely different character that you're creating. I'm gonna give you an example and you'll see how this character talks and has different emotions than Miss Maggart. So here you go, here is my example of character attention please. Y'all, my name is Cheryl, and three things about me. I love camping. Also, I ride horses, and I love playing in the mud. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you guys. So now it's going to be your turn to have a little bit of time to create a character of your own with attention, please, the character round. If you have time to film this and send it over to us, we would love to see these character challenges. But if you run out of time, do not worry. That is okay. One last note on Night at the Museum before you guys have a chance to try it out for yourselves. Make sure that we are practicing our best sportsmanship in our game. This is a game that has outs, which means you might get out of the game. And we would definitely want to make sure that we're using our best sportsmanship and brushing it off our shoulder and knowing that we can always dive in to the next round and have another chance to go for it. Okay, so definitely no hurt feelings in drama class. We're all here having a good time and Night Museum definitely is a chance for you to practice sportsmanship. All right, you guys, I hope you've had fun with Mystery March and I cannot wait to see you again soon.